All right, so let's get working on the dress. I'm gonna do the purple because that's what she wanted. So you're gonna need to make a slip knot on the end of your yarn. So figure out where you want to start. This is the waistline. So that's generally where I start is at the waistline. You can make it as long and short or short. At, you can do whatever you want as far as the dress goes. It's completely up to you. We are making the pantaloons for it too. So attach your yarn to the end of your hook and just you're just on the post. So you've just stuck it through the two stitches and you're just on the post. So just bring it through the post and make a stitch and then you're going to go back in you see where I'm going back in right where the purple is and I'm going to pick up the other post and I'm going to make a stitch so there's no count for this you're just making stitches all along around the doll keeping it straight and this is what we're going to build our dress off of are these stitches here. Sorry, I'm not really on camera a whole lot. I don't often pay that much attention to my camera. <laughs> it's kind of right up my face. So you're coming up because you've gone in a spiral that's how we built it as you're coming up on it you're going to be just a little above it but if you go into this hole and then down into this hole after the dress is built it's not even noticeable once you come back around sorry I gotta get situated once you come back around that first stitch you did you can just go into that and make a slip stitch and then you're going to chain two so we're doing going to do double crochets so let me just throw my ball on the floor get that out of the way So you're going to increase just like you do with anything else. You're going to increase with this. Sorry, this is going to be very awkward to film. So I'm not going to film all of this with you. Um, I'll probably put the majority of what you need to do on the screen just because of how awkward this is. Um, not being able to turn the doll or really move the doll because I have to be on camera. So bear with me. Um, so once you got your stitches around it, like I said, it doesn't matter how many stitches you have, as long as you have stitches around, um, you're going to just double crochet in each stitch. And then after that, we will start our um, increases to bring the dress out. So just one double crochet in each stitch around. So at this point, if you need to know how many stitches, you can just count them here. So once you've come back around to the other side, 
you can just slip stitch to the third chain so that's the the chain two that you did you can just go to the top of that one and do a slip stitch and chain two so I just had an idea you can do this with Thule too and make it look like a little tutu that'd be cute anyway moving on so your next row is going to be two double crochets in each so we're just increasing like we would on a doll we're just doing it on a dress with double crochets so um, the next round is just going to be two double crochets in each stitch starting with where you put your chain two you can put one there kind of cuts down on the um, seam a little bit so two in each hole all the way around and again I'm going to leave you to it with my pause screen and I will meet you back on the other side so I've come back around and I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of that first chain and I'm going to chain two so your next row so we're, we're if you're fine with where this is you don't have to do another increase row you can just build down um, but for the other dolls to make it flare right out um, my next row was one double crochet two well two double crochets can could put one in the same stitch here two double crochets one double crochets so put one in the same space as your chain so now I have two double crochets so my next stitch is going to be one double crochet my next stitch is going to be two double crochet and then my next stitch is going to be one so do this repeat all the way around if you want your dress to flare out like mine um, if not just continue doing your one single or one double crochet um, all the way around until you have and down until you have the length that you want all right I'm back around again from my um, increase so again you're just gonna the third stitch up top of that chain two that you did slip stitch and do a chain two so from here down you're just gonna put one double crochet in each stitch around until you find it's long enough now keep in mind we are making these pantaloons so you do want them to show if you're if you want to make them if you don't want to make them you don't have to make them but um, for this tutorial we're, we're making the pantaloons so if you if you want them to show at least you know as as much as that then um, let's see all together I did one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen rows all together to get my length and then I put the scallops sorry I can't see and then I put the scallop on the bottom so 14 rows all together to get the length that I have so that you can still see the pantaloons so if that gives you any indication so but it's all up to you so from here down you're just gonna do one double crochet in each stitch around and I'll meet you back here when you're ready Alrighty, so I'm down pretty far on my dress. I put some blue stripes in there, so River should like it. So what we're gonna do now is put the scallops, put a scalloped edge on it. So you don't have to, you can just leave it like this um, if you want. But um, this is the scalloped edge that I'm gonna put on it. So, you can follow along or you don't have to follow along. It's 
pretty simple. So you're going to chain two. Your next stitch, you're going to put three double crochets into that stitch. All three of them go into the same stitch. Then you're going to skip one and you're going to single crochet into this stitch. And then the very next stitch you're going to put three double crochets. Skip one, so skip that one, and go into this one and put a single crochet. So that's how we're going to do our scallops all the way around. So you skip your when you skip one, you're skipping it after you've done your three double crochets. So you go right into the next stitch next to your single crochet, and you put three doubles. Now you're going to skip one and go into the next one with a single. And go right into a, your three double crochets. Skip one, go into a single, then go right into three doubles. Skip one, single crochet, and right back into three doubles. Oops. So you can go ahead and finish your scalloped edge, and I will put on the screen what you need to do. And I will meet you right back here after and we will we're gonna do um, our wig cap before we do our arms and then we'll get to the arms All right, so I've come back around and I'm just going to slip stitch. And fasten off. So you can just tuck this one away on the underside here. And then this guy here, I mean, you could probably just cut him off. I'm just going to pull him down into the doll. There we go. I don't know if you saw any of that, but... So, hard to see when I don't have, uh, I don't really have the lens. Yeah, kind of hard to see. But, so it looks pretty silly without a, without any arms, but we'll get there. Um, so, 
We're going to make the wig cap out of whatever color hair you're going to have. So I'm going to have yellow hair. So um, making a wig cap is going to be easier to, to put the hair in without this mess being here. So um, get your colors. I'm going to straighten my head after squishing it around. Um, get all your get whatever color that your hair is going to be and um, and I will meet you back here. So I got my yellow for my wig cap. As River said that she wanted yellow hair, so my yellow. So we're just gonna start. You can still use your number five. So we're gonna start with a magic ring. We are going to put eight single crochets into the spring. So you need a stitch marker. You're going to put two single crochets in each stitch around, so you should have 16. And your, after your first stitch, you want to put your marker in. Then you can put your second stitch into that same space. So two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 16. Now you can pull your middle closed all the way. And in your next round you're going to do one single crochet, two single crochets. So we want to keep this going in, not cup. So my next round is going to be one, one, two. So one single crochet in your stitch marker. Another single crochet, and then your two single crochets. So one, one, two, all the way around. And your next round is going to be one, 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 two. So three single crochets and your increase. So to give you an idea, it's so nice and flat for now. So gives you an idea of how big this is for the head. So you don't really need it to cover the whole entire head, but we do kind of need it to be big, bigger. 
because that's all it's covering. But we want it to keep it flat because if it starts to come in then it's going to start to stand up like that. So our next row is going to be four single crochets in an increase and that's going to just keep it flat for us and make it bigger. Let's try this on for size. Like I said, I'm just winging it. I got no pattern. So that's a lot bigger. Now I do like to kind of have it back a little bit away from the eyes because the, the curls will hang down. Like you'll have to do a bit of a haircut. But, you know, it's it's at the back enough for when you, you do your hair, your long curls. So, because it looks like that and it's not really, f so now we're going to do a row of just singles and it should kind of cup it in a little bit. Should. Let's find out. So we're just going to do one round of one single crochet in each stitch around. kind of curves around a little bit but not as much so let's do a little bit of a decrease that should really cup it around and then we should be able to finish so we'll do um, let's say three single crochets and a decrease So that's my three single crochets and then two together for a decrease. Yeah, that kind of decreased it a little bit and brought it kind of up and around. So when we sew it down, let's turn it the way it's supposed to be turned, first of all. So, that's not bad. I should be able to get quite a bit of hair on that. So, we can just fasten off. And go into the next stitch and do your slip stitch. So, you're going to want to leave enough of a tail to sew this onto the head. This thing you can just tie a knot. So that's the kind of needle I'm using. And that's got that little. So, put my little hat on. So I'm just going to come up.
just to leg it in there. I'm going to use some pins to stick in here and there to keep it tacked into place a little bit. I go ahead and sew. Also, it's going to be hard to get on camera. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Sorry, my camera shut off. So hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm going in as close as I can to that uh, wig cap. Just want to make sure it's straight. And I'm just going to come up into, well, kind of in front of the stitch. So when I pull, that's going to go down and slightly under. So I just want to get in as close as I can. And I'm going to come up, preferably in front of every stitch. So you shouldn't be able to see my stitches. But it should be on there firmly enough. Sometimes the stuffing gets in the way. Oh, stuck on feet and everything else. So we're just going to continue this all the way around. So that's what it's going to look like. But you shouldn't be able to see this from from um, underneath the hair. So we're going to put enough curls in there that it shouldn't be noticeable. So you can just carry on with that and I'm going to carry on with mine and I'll meet you right back here after you're all sewed on. So I'm back around to my other side. I just got a few more stitches to do and then um, as funny as this looks, trust me, it'll be worth it. I'll show you all my other dolls. Um, one of my dolls I did a wig cap for, and the other doll I did not do a wig cap for. So I can show you the difference of not doing one. So I'm back to where I started, but I'm still going to put that one more in there just for extra, extra security. And then I'm just going to weave my end in and out, different places. I mean, odds are it's not going anywhere. So I'm not going down into the head, I'm just going down into the wig cap to, to do my weaving. As long as when you cut, you got to push down on the doll and pull up on your thread. That way it pops back on. The inside pops back. So just straighten your head out. Because it's going to be all distorted now. So there's my girl with her, her wig cap on. So, but you're not going to really, you're not going to see that. I'll show you my wings. Wings I gotta show you guys, but so I did not do a wig cap on here because I was doing white hair and purple hair and I thought, 
well, it's no big deal. I'll just not do one. Well, it is a big deal because you can see her white head through the wig cap. And here's the center where I sewed it shut. I had a heck of a time trying to get hair in there. So to me, that looks horrible. Thankfully, Trin Trin's not going to notice. So for this one, I did a wig cap. So that's her wig cap there. You can see the front of it where her bangs are. And if you pull her hair back, I'm I'm exposing the wig cap, but you can't see it. But this all in there is all the wig cap. But because I made it the same color as the hair, you can't even tell that she's got anything there. So oh, there's a bald spot where I missed to put some hair. So... And then the back. I didn't make it. As long as this one, I didn't make it because I was just doing short curly hair. So I only went that far down the back for the wig cap. So she's got this much hair or this much neck. So that's why the wig cap is shorter on this doll is because I did the short little curls because that's what, that's what Havana wanted was the short little curls. So... So for this one, because... River wants long curly hair like the purple doll I just showed you. Um, that's why I went further down on for the wig cap. So now that we've done that, it's just easier to work around not having arms right now. So bear with me. So we're gonna do the pantaloons, which are these guys. I'm gonna take this off so I can show you without showing you the whole doll since my camera does not have a wide angle lens. Uh, I guess it has a wide angle lens, just not as wide as I need it. So these are the pantaloons. Now I did um, just a scalloped edge on the top, a scalloped edge on the bottom for this one. But for trends, I did more of a cuffed top. So um, if you know how to do either, I mean, we are, you already know how to do the scallops because we just did them. So I like the scallops, so I think for this one I'll do the scallops. But if you know how to do the cuff top, the front post, back post, then you can go ahead and make one of those. But for this video, we're gonna do the um, I'll quickly go through the other one with you, but I'm not gonna do it but I'll show you how it's done, but I'm not gonna do it. We're gonna do that because I think it's cuter. So what I did for these is gonna be completely unorthodox. It's not probably anything you've, I don't know how other people make pants. I just know how I made the pants. So um, I didn't watch another video to do this. I just did it, but we're going to build these flat because I want this video. I want a lot, a lot of my videos to be beginner friendly. So this is built flat and then it's sewn shut and then I put on the top and the bottoms after I sew the crotch in the middle. So to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing next, move my wings. So we don't need this doll right now. Decide what color you want your pantaloons. Um, I am going to probably, I don't know what color to do mine. They're, they're kind of underwear, right? So I think I'm just going to go with the, with the skin color. And then I'll just do what I did here is put a, a color. Because they're, they're underwear. There's no way, there's no different way to say it. They're underwear. All you do is make a slip knot. Take your number five, or your H, and you're going to chain 41. All right, so I've got my 41. Hope you can see this okay. Pretty straightforward what we're doing, so you don't really, really need to see as long as you follow my word prompts. You're going to single crochet 40 
So you're basically single crocheting all the way back up. There's no missing, you're going right into the first stitch that you can get your, your stuff into. And we're just going to single crochet in each stitch all the way back up to the top. So you should have a total of 40 when you get back up there. So just tighten your slip knot there. It probably came undone a little bit. So that's my 40 all the way back up. So you're going to chain one. You're going to turn your work. And you're going to single crochet 40. And you're going to do this till you have 12 rows. So from here, you've got 11 rows to do. So you can go ahead and just do your single crochet for the next 11 rows. Pretty easy peasy. And I will put my pause screen up and when you're done, I will meet you back on the other side. Alrighty, I've got my 12 rows done. So, um, you can just fasten off and leave a tail because we're going to use this to sew the two ends together. So you should have both of these on the same side if you have an even number on the opposite side if you have an odd number so this is 12 so it's even number you should have and if you don't think this is big enough add a couple more rows it's perfectly fine as long as you have it the size that you want it it doesn't really matter so I'm just gonna take my needle so let's hide this I say so way too much Let's just shove this somewhere. So we're just going to do a simple whip stitch. So a whip stitch. Now you don't have stitches here, so a whip stitch here I'll show you over here a whip stitch is generally the back loop to the back loop of your piece but we don't have my battery is gonna die so make this quick so we don't have any stitches so you're just gonna have to improvise So I should mention it should be back to back, so it should be inside, should be inside out, which I didn't do. I did mine right side in. So I'm just going to pull these stitches out. And I'm going to do mine inside out, like I'm supposed to be. Because you don't want to see this crap when you turn your right side in. You don't want to see any of the sewing in the crotch or um, sewing down the side. So you shouldn't really, shouldn't really notice the sewing down the side too much. My battery died, I just had to change my battery. So 
So I'm going in really shallow. This doesn't have to be a deep, deep stitch. Um, the less, the shallower the stitch, the more you're not going to really see a whole lot of crap from the other side. But you also want it to hold, so kind of just coming to my end. I'm going to stick it through here. Try to tie a tiny wee knot. I'll do that again. So you can just weave down because you are going to be sewing the crotch. So just kind of weave your stitches to about the middle. I don't want to waste any thread here. So put your pants on. Figure out where you want them. So don't forget, we're putting scalloped edge here, so. I mean, you don't have to, you can leave yours there and then you, that way you can pull them all the way up. Um, for me, I'm gonna put a scalloped edge on, so I'm just gonna kinda leave it down there a little bit. So once you decide where you want it, then you can just start sewing your crotch. this leg. Nope, I just got tangled in the leg. Bear with me, it's not easy to do on camera. Sorry. So try not to make it too tight around the legs because you want to be able to take this on and off. You want your kids to be able to take this on and off. So that's about it. You can come back up. If you've got enough, you can come back up just to make it a little more secure. I'm just going to put my, try to make a knot. Oops, sorry. And then I'm just going to weave up along the leg. Back up and around till I get to this seam so it's nice and tight in here. So I'm going to go up the seam. So we've kept our seam, which I guess I should have mentioned. We've kept our seam along the side, so it's not that noticeable. I forgot to mention to be careful where you leave your seam. So I'm just doing a little bit of weaving up, up the, um, up where we sewed. Kind of stretch everything back out. So there you have your pants. So once your crotch is sewn, you got your side all sewn, you can turn it right side in. So we did everything inside out. So turn your pants right side in.
So your seam is there. It's not that noticeable. So now we're going to do the top and the bottoms. And I think I will do mine in the blue. So pick a color. So I will show you two ways. So I showed you before how I did um, the one top, which is front post, back post. And and then this this one I did scallop. So this is the what I'm going to do on this pair of underwear as well. And uh, so all you want to do is make a slip knot. And I'll show you how to do the front post, back post on the top. So just make sure it fits snugly. You can take it back off for now. So we just want to attach. So I'm going to suggest attaching at the back of your work. I'm just going to cut that off. I didn't like that. So I'm going to attach at the back of my work. So I'll decide where your back is. It all looks the same, so it doesn't really matter. Attach your piece to your hook. Pull through your stitch and make a stitch. And pull your knot back through there if you want. So even though there's a stitch there, we're going to make another stitch. Just to secure things, and we're not going to do it with that. We're going to do it with this. So that just kind of secures things. So... To do your front post, back post, you're going to come down in into this stitch, but not into the stitch. So you're going to go into this stitch and out this stitch, and that's your front post. And then you can yarn over, and that's your front post. So you do front post, back post. So the back post is you come from behind into that stitch and you go out the other stitch and now you have the back post on and you do the same thing you yarn over you don't have to manipulate your work a little bit by folding it a little or whatever and then pull through and then you go front post again so now you can do this with a double crochet as well it doesn't have to be single So that's your front post, back post. You're probably going to have to do two rows in order to really notice it. You can also do a double front post, back post. So you just yarn over like you're doing a double. You go into that stitch, around and out that stitch. Yarn over, pull through. Then you pull through just like you've done it. A double crochet. Yarn over again, go in the back door, through, you have to fold your work or something. Then you do front post again. So you alternate front post, back post. It gives it a really nice look, but this is not what I'm going to do today. But if that's what you choose to do, oops, I'm dragging everything with me. If that's what you choose to do, then that's the look you're going to get. And I did two rows. So that's two rows of single front post, back post. But today, this decides to, we're just going to do scallops. So after I've attached, I want to put an extra stitch in there to keep it secure. So I'm going to put that double 
in there. And then I'm going to put another double in there. So I'm going to put two doubles in my first stitch. Then I'm going to skip one and I'm going to single crochet into here. And then I'm going to start my three doubles. So three double crochets in here. Skip stitch, go into the next stitch and do a single crochet. Then your next stitch you do three double crochets. Skip stitch, then you go into your next stitch and do a single crochet. Next stitch gets three doubles, so you don't skip anything after you've made that. You skip it before. So three double crochets, skip, next stitch gets a single, next stitch gets three double crochets. So you go right into the three double crochets after your single crochet. Skip one, single crochet, into there. So I'll meet you back around here to the side and we'll just carry on and I'll meet you back around to show you why we only put two in that hole. Okay, so I've come back around. I've just done my three double crochets in there. So I'm going to skip one and I'm going to put one in here. And then I'm just kind of left with this stitch. So the reason I put two in here was because now I can put one in here. And then do a slip stitch. So then it's basically like I've just put two or three in that hole. So then you get a look like this. And it's seamless. So that's why, that's a, behind my, that's the reason behind my madness. So you can just fasten off. I'm going to tie these two together. I know it's a little unorthodox to do something like that. However, I don't have to tuck nothing in if I do that, so. I can just make a really tight knot so it's very, very small. And then I can just cut it off at the knot and not have to worry about trying to tuck it into this, which probably wouldn't really hold that well. Another reason we started at the back. So, we can do the exact same thing on the bottom of your pants. Uh, I am gonna do purple on the scallop bottoms because number one it's easier for you guys to see so just make a slip knot again we're at the back of your project so, I'm going to say somewhere near the crotch, you can go in, add your yarn, make your stitch, put a double crochet into there. Oh, snagging on some stuff. Put two double crochets in there, actually two double crochets in that space and now we're going to miss a space and we're going to do a single now I'm weaving in my my end and then we're going to do our three sorry I don't even know if I'm on camera we're going to do our three double crochets
So, <laughs> we're going to skip a stitch and put a single crochet in there. And then we're kind of all left out of options. So, you're going to put a double in the same ish space as your single. Then you're going to go into this stitch that's kind of turned over and do a slip stitch. And you can fasten off. So now I weaved my other end in, but if you didn't, then you can just tie a knot. I just weaved it in as I went. So, you're going to do the exact same thing for the other leg. Oh, I got a little piece of yarn. So, do the exact same thing for the other leg and I'll meet you right back here. Alrighty, so I got my, my little pantaloons done. It kind of matches my shoes. <laughs> so, we can just put this on a doll. See how it fits. It's pretty good. We'll leave the arms for last. So, I left these wings off on purpose. But these are the wings that I did and I haven't put them on the back of the doll yet but these are the wings that I did and I did it in a sparkly yarn so that's what we're gonna do next all right let's get started on making this these wings I'm using two pieces of yarn both sparkle sparkle cakes this is the pink and I'm using the silver gray silver so we're just going to make a slip knot and then with our number four hook we're going to chain 18. We're going to single crochet 17 back up. It's just your slip knot, you can pull that tight. You can chain one and turn your work. And you're going to single crochet 15. Don't forget to get into this very first stitch here. That keeps your edge nice and straight. or single crochet 15 back up Chain 
chain one, turn your work. Now you're going to single crochet 13. Don't forget this first stitch. That's 13, chain 1, turn your work, and repeat. Single crochet 13, back up. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to single crochet ten. Chain one, turn your work, and single crochet ten. Chain one, turn your work. So now you're going to single crochet eight. Chain one, turn your work, and single crochet, single crochet eight. Chain one, turn your work, single crochet six, chain one, turn your work. So this is where we get fancy dancy. You're in a single crochet in your first stitch. You're going to half double crochet in your next stitch. Maybe. Oh, I'm snagged on something. You're going to double crochet in the next two stitches. You're going to half double crochet in the next. And then you're going to put two half double crochets in the last stitch. And then you're going to turn it sideways. So you're looking at your side of your wings. You're going to have to space this out, preferably evenly. So you're going to put a double crochet. And another double crochet. Just try to evenly space it. You're going to put a half double crochet and another half double crochet without getting snagged on a bunch of crap, preferably. Then you're going to put a single crochet, and then you're going to put two single crochets. And then you can go right into this. This is your slip stitch knot, so you can go right into that stitch right after your slip stitch, and make a slip stitch, or right after your slip knot and make a slip stitch and fasten off. And 
and that's your first wing. Now you're going to make this, the second one the exact same and then you're just going to flip it over to match the edges so you'll have to put your Heidi Ho ends on the different and so this one I'll turn backwards just so I can remember which which one's backwards which one isn't so that means I'm gonna hide my ends on this side so I'm just gonna stick this right through here so when I make the next one the exact same I know that I'm gonna be using the right side of it so I'm just gonna go down through these stitches and then this here I'm just going to go up through here because it seems pretty tight that's my first one so you can go ahead and follow the exact same pattern I'm gonna put it up on the screen and you can make your second one and then um, I'll meet you right back here all right so I got my two ends and one's going to have to be backwards and one's going to be right side facing. Um, I did not leave enough of a tail to, to do all my sewing. I only, what, for whatever reason, I'm dumb today. So I just taken an extra piece and I made a slip knot on the end of it. So we're just going to sew the tops. Of, I'm at the back side. You can see where I've made a knot there and tied my end. Um, so at the back side, whatever your back side is, we're just going to make a knot and then we're going to go through the slip knot. And then we're going to pull real tight on everything. And then you can just sew together as much as the top part as you want. It's all up to you how much you want sewn together, but just keep enough to sew to your actual doll. I'm just going to sew my end in so that I can just cut it off instead of trying to weave it. So it doesn't really matter how shoddy your work is. <laughs> Mine's usually pretty shoddy. I don't sew. <laughs> I don't sew well. So that's probably about as far as I'm going to go. So the rest of this, if you've got enough left over, you can just tie a knot just to, for added security. You can just tie a knot and uh, cut it off so you're not going to see any of that that's going to be up against the doll so this is the part you're going to see so we get our doll put her face down because you got to try to I do so low on the back because um, I'm going to have hair and I don't want the hair to hide the wings. So I am going to actually, I'm going to kind of shimmy my way back to the top through all these stitches. And then I'm going to snag a piece here. I can pull down on. I'm going to come back up through the wings 
and then on the other side I'm going to go down through the wings and at the same time I'm going to go back down into the doll and around. It's very hard to show you on camera what I'm doing. So I'm only attaching it to that one post. So again I'm going to go back up through this wing down around this wing and then I'm gonna come back up again through that post and then through the other wing so you might have a better way to sew this on um, I am NOT very good with sewing so I uh, I'm just kind of winging it and again I'm going to come down through that post, back out again, and now I'm just going to go down into the doll, and I'm going to pop out in random places just like we've done before with weaving our ends in. So here's a suggestion, is to tie a knot. Try to get it as close as you can to the doll at the bottom. Now you can cut this off and then just take your needle and stick that down inside the doll and hope that knot gets tangled up in the stuffing. And you can secure it that way. Pull the pants back up. So I can straighten out our our wings. So if you feel the need to um, to keep these nice and stiff so that they don't move, I will show you a secret. So I should have showed you this before. Um, before I sewed it to the doll, which I didn't because I'm an idiot. So get something that you can wash and a paintbrush that you can wash or throw out, whatever you want to do. You're going to need a little bit of water and you're going to need some glue. Now I'm going to use fabric glue, but for some of my other projects, I don't know if you've watched my tulip one or not or if I've even posted my tulip video but I use sparkle glue to do what I'm about to do so these wings have been treated with what I'm making right now um, and it just keeps them nice and stiff so then when they're on the doll they're not gonna roll up like these are doing right now they're gonna stay nice and stiff and even if you bend them, they bounce back into shape. So, um, it's a homemade starch is what it is. So you can buy starch from Amazon. Um, it's a spray starch. And it's about an 8 ounce bottle for about $13 Canadian. So it'll be cheaper for Americans right now. Um, I used... For these wings, I just use sparkle. I just use glitter glue. You can buy it at the dollar store. I'm going to use fabric glue because the fabric glue actually gives it a stiffer um, texture. Uh, you know, makes it stiffer. So you're going to put whatever amount you think you need. So I know that might be hard to see. I'm going to put this much in. You can see that. So it's it's like um, two part glue, one part water kind of deal. So that's about as much glue as I have, which I don't know how much it is. So I'm just going to put it, oh, spill the water all over the place. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water in there. And then I'm just going to mix it so it should turn thick. I mean not like toothpaste thick. If you want it toothpaste thick you can do it. 
it'll just make your wings extra thick. So you can do this with anything that you crochet. Um, it's just a homemade starch, so it's it's way cheaper than actually buying starch. And I, I think that's too watery for me. So I'm going to put in some more glue. You can use school glue, Elmer's glue. A little bit more. I want my wings to be stiff. So it might take a bit to get the consist consistency that you want, especially if you spill your water like I did. So once you have it, It's gonna be hard to show you. I got my little silicone mat to keep my doll protected because like I said I should have done this prior to sewing it on but I'm an idiot. So all you're gonna do is just wipe this. You're just gonna paint it on. Now my glue is see-through like it's clear you can buy school glue that's clear and um, but if you if you use the Elmer's glue white school glue because if that's what you have that's what you're going to use um, it'll it'll dry invisible you won't see it on your project so just plaster this wherever you want it to be stiff and just absolutely soak it So during the drying process, if you want these to um, be a certain way, if you want to shape them or you want to, you know, do something where they're, um, I, I don't know what I'm trying to say. If you want to shape these in any way, once, wait about 10 minutes after applying and then you can probably come back and shape them and then continue to let it dry and they should be fine and you sh should do the front and the back of these so I should have done this when we were after after we made them before we sewed them on I should have done this but I am having a very off day So I didn't, it did not cross my mind. So, but this doesn't take long to dry. You can set it outside if you're having a gorgeous day. Set it outside, let the sun dry it up fast. 